What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Being prepared is, is the biggest part of having such a great season. And I feel like every year we'll head into the year, we think we've got all of our stuff together when we don't. So today we're gonna talk about my five preparation tips that should make for an awesome winter. Let's get into it. All right, so when it comes to the preseason preparation and why we thought it was awesome to do a video and just provide some tips, some helpful insight is, you can imagine, we're always in this spot where we're too busy, there's, there's always something that's getting in the way of why we're not prepared and then the next day it snows four feet and we're standing there like, I'm not in shape, I haven't checked my gear, I don't even know where my beacon is, all of those different things. And so being prepared for the season, because we don't really know, Mother Nature doesn't tell us when it's gonna be on or not. And so having some preparation and knowing what we know we need to do every single year is gonna be super helpful. My number one preparation tip, and you guys have probably been following me with the Avalanche Alliance, is getting my Avalanche equipment ready for the year. So what does that mean? Let's break it down. So. We're talking about the backpack. You guys are all familiar and we've done plenty of videos talking about Avalanche airbags, but going through your gear. So opening it up, understanding that, you know, you've, you've had a, an incredible season from last year for, if you're a guy like me, you're using your equipment a lot. So using your probes, using your shovel, all of those things, they, they're wear items, right? So there's wear and tear on them. So opening up your backpack and making sure that all of that equipment is in proper working order it's the perfect time in the preseason to replace those things. There's not a ton of fixing. Maybe there's some manufacturer stuff going on there, but to go in and replace those things, knowing that these are life-saving tools, this is my number one preparation. When I look at the pack, not only is the pack on the, on the, on the inside and what's important, but actually looking at the pack. So, you know, making sure that the straps, everything else about the pack, there's no wear and tear, there's no, there's no rips, there's no real cause for concern with that. And then going a bit deeper, going into the backpack, you know, it is a capacitor system, making sure I've changed the batteries in there, making sure that I've charged the system, heck, all the way until I've deployed the bag so that I can check the airbag itself, all of those things. Again, if you're one of those that just puts this stuff on and assumes because the last time you checked, all of that stuff was good to go. Working off of assumptions when we go out and ride doesn't always mean that that's a threat, but you could dive in there to go use your shovel, let's say, and find out that your shovel has rusted and something's wrong with it and all of a sudden you need it and the product isn't working the way it's supposed to. All right, when it comes to our Avalanche transceivers, you guys have heard before and you've even heard me talk about it, when we store our transceivers throughout the summer, anytime you're gonna have sort of a, a distance between when you're gonna use it, pulling the batteries from the transceiver, leaving them away from that transceiver so that we don't have any opportunity for corrosion. Batteries can fail and when they do, and you see that as you pull those out of there, it's pretty tough to trust this one piece of equipment. So taking the, the batteries out is really important. This is the brand new Ortovox Direct uh, transceiver, brand new this season, and you can tell there is no slot to put batteries in it. So this is a sealed lithium ion battery that we simply plug in. And so that kind of takes that worry away from it. But again, I would want to make sure that I fully charge this. Okay, so we've broke down our avalanche equipment. You guys remember, I can't stress this enough. This is, this is our life-saving equipment. So let's not assume that anything is in working order. Let's, let's, let's tear it down, let's go through it. If there's things that need to be replaced, let's go ahead and do that. Because this is the stuff that when seconds count, I want that equipment to work for me. If there's someone under the snow, I need to be an asset to the rescue, not a, a liability. So let's remember those things. The next one, the next preseason tip that kind of segues perfectly from our gear, as you guys remember, we can have all of this avalanche gear and not know how to use it. So my next preparation tip for the season would be to take some level of avalanche training. So whether you're gonna get involved, and we'll put a link in the drop down. we'll also have some other uh, videos that'll pop up here that talk about what to expect in a level one avalanche course, but taking some type of training. And remember that a dealership course, it gets you, it gets you involved. It gets you understanding equipment and everything else, but there is and never will be 
a substitute for that on snow training. So preparation tip number two would be to take an avalanche course, knowing I've got all of this equipment, how do I use it? How I pull my transceiver out, I go into search mode, I look for that, you know, that person that's under the snow. There's a ton of scenarios involved, all of those different things. But understanding how to use the equipment, that's gonna hopefully make us more prepared for our season so that when seconds count and I've gotta be the one that's on the rescue side, I am ready to go. So not only is it important as a rescuer, but it is also important to understand what this gear does if you are caught in an avalanche. So the moment that we see that snow or that instability in the snowpack, let's get to this and let's deploy. All right, so preseason preparation tip number three, we've kind of got a situation here. We've got a used sled with a brand new sled and there are plenty of videos that are out there kind of explaining like the you know, the, some tips in terms of preseason, things like that. In fact, we've got one of them that we'll put up there as well when we go through the snowmobiles. So we talk about everything from, you know, your clutches, clutch wear, your belt, belt life, your track, remembering if you've got air shocks to go ahead and put those shocks back up to your specs, uh, things like that, which I think are really helpful. Going through the handlebars, making sure that all your controls and everything else with the idea that we are prepared so that that first day of riding is a good one. Some other things to think about when we're, and we actually did go through talking about draining the fuel. I feel like that one gets missed a lot. So remember that you've had fuel sitting in the tank since last fall, pulling that fuel out and starting with that 91 non-ethanol, that fresh fuel, maybe even fresh plugs. Just make sure that that sled is ready to go when you are. Some other wear items that we didn't talk about would be going through the skis, lifting up a ski, checking on the carbides, looking underneath the spindle. And these are things that you can kind of visually inspect, but really the way to do that properly is to pull the ski from the spindle, look at the, the ski rubber there. Chances are it's pretty worn out. The sled's got a few hundred miles on it and you're riding them in the trees, riding them in the, the aggressive stuff. That ski rubber is likely to have failed or it's close to. So they're pretty inexpensive. It's a great way to just start off your season with a fresh ski rubber. And again, looking underneath this, checking the carbides and the carbide life. That's all pretty dang important. Visual inspection of the front end, going through and looking at every nut and bolt, looking for any kind of stress cracks in and around the shock area, looking at the shocks themselves. Again, you're gonna wanna go through, put that shock pressure right back up to where it was. Just remember all of those things that you've done from the tail end of the season, and you're kind of going back through it. Again, looking at your belt drive, looking for exhaust leaks, looking at your antifreeze level, all of those things. And as we move back on the snowmobile, looking at your track, looking at your high faxes. So tipping the sled over and getting to where you can actually visually inspect the high fax, you might start your season with high faxes that are nearly gone. So pre-season preparation, what a perfect time to do that. Look for a video of how you can change your high faxes without having to take the whole sled apart coming up soon. So if you've taken delivery of a new snowmobile, there's still quite a few things to prepare for that first day of riding. One, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use, and I've been a big fan, and I get it that this is gonna sound like an ad, but Polaris recommends their VES line of oils. Well, I'm not changing from that. So we use the VES Extreme, so I make sure that I put oil into the machine. I'm gonna put sled, I'm gonna put fuel into the sled. I'm gonna use 91 non-ethanol, and I'm really gonna take time to go through the break-in process. So the break-in process for us is pretty simple. Once I get the sled essentially built and put together, I'll fire them up. A lot of times they're gonna smoke. They've got a lot of oil inside of the engine, so they're gonna smoke. So you wouldn't wanna do this inside. Take them outside and just let them idle. Let them run up to temperature, get into that 120 to 130 degree mark, and then you can shut them down. Going through multiple heat cycles like that is pretty dang important, and you're just doing justice to the motor. Not only is the manufacturer recommending that, but I am recommending that as well. Another part of the break-in period would be putting some miles on it under full throttle RPM. So we'll go out and we'll ride these things. We've got a kind of a perfect scenario here in Alpine where we'll road ride for about five miles in and out of the throttle. So does it mean you can go wide open throttle? And the answer is certainly. So you can blip throttle, wide open, let off, and you're just in and out of that RPM range for about that five mile period. Then we'll shut the sleds down, 
let them cool down 35 minutes or so. We'll sit out there and we'll talk shop for a while. Again, it'd be a great time to pull the side panels, look for anything that's suspicious, look for oil, look for leaks, look for any of those things. Let that engine cool back down and then we'll fire them back up, bring them back up to engine temp, run them that five miles in and out. We do that a couple of times and man, that snowmobile has gone through a really, really good break-in period. Now we all know that the engines really start to come alive after a certain amount of hours, but know this, that about the 100 mile mark is when these snowmobiles, whether it was an Axis or a new Matrix, about that 100 miles is when these sleds are gonna really come to life and they're actually truly out of break-in. So pay attention to that. Do yourself justice by not relying completely on the manufacturer. I need to go through, I need to adjust everything. So I'm gonna put a tool or tools on literally every part of this knowing that that preseason preparation is so dang important. All right, so preseason preparation tip number four is gonna be going through your gear. So separate from our avalanche equipment, I wanna look at all of my gear. So there's a lot of stuff that is, got just maybe a few rides on it, but there are a fair amount of things like your underlayers and things like that, that you might have a season's worth of riding on. And it would be important to go through and just inspect that gear obviously wash it. You guys are gonna see uh, a video pop up here in the corner about washing climb gear. I think that's really, really important. You need to remember that Gore-Tex is a material that you know, a lot of times our oils and just the filth from the outside can start to kind of lock in that moisture. And so Climb and Gore-Tex actually recommends you washing that gear and washing it often. So check out that video if you want more information about how we would wash our gear but I really wanted to kind of point out some things. And this is just based on some information I'd gathered over the years of guys just struggling with like the bad day, right? Our whole focus here is no bad days, but a lot of it was just related to either riding too hot or too cold. While we've got this gear out, let's remember that there are a lot of different companies out there that make not just one base layer. So Climb in particular, they make everything from a negative 1.0 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and then up to even wearing sweatpants, I guess if you were that cold and you needed to wear something even thicker. But the, the point being is that you have a lot of options. You have options with what you're wearing under your, your outer wear so that you can regulate your temperature and be comfortable. Um, I, I put this vest here. I'm a, a big fan of like a puffy or a vest like that, especially if you're wearing a one piece suit there's not a, a ton of time when my legs will get cold. A lot of that is attributed to, you know, whether I'm wearing two pair of socks, I'm wearing some pretty uh, significant knee and shin protection. My legs don't often get cold. My feet, on the other hand, they get pretty dang cold. So we'll go into the boots here in a second. But my upper body, whether I'm wearing a pretty compact puffy jacket or even like a puffy vest, this is an awesome mid-layer that you're not gonna wear the whole time. This could be something that you're wearing on that cold trail ride in, and then maybe if you had to sit for a while during lunch and or that cold trail ride out, and in a first aid or an emergency situation, you had to put this on someone and or you were staying overnight, you'd be real thankful that you had some type of mid layer like that. So the upper body part of that, that's what we're really trying to regulate. And a lot of times I will see people wearing insulated gear, things that are just not meant for the type of movement that we are doing when we're mountain riding. So remember that there are options. As I look at this gear, some of this stuff has got so many years of riding on it, but it's funny that, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'll get new gear each year, but there's still a lot of this that is two or three year old mid layers that I just like. They, they've broke in, they feel good. I've got socks and things here that will just continue to wash and go through because you like what you like, but inspecting the socks, inspecting the long johns, those, uh, those upper, upper, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> those things. Yeah. That shirt over there, that long sleeve, a turtleneck, any of those things. Then going through your gloves. Like this was such a killer example of gloves that I wore from this last year. This is an, uh, an insulated inversion glove that the index fingers from one finger on the brake and then just working around the sleds and, and, and overall just wear and tear, I can tell that these don't have too many rides left in them. Could you take these and throw them in the backpack as like an extra set and the answer would be sure, but at some point these things have kind of ran their, 
their life with you and it's time to replace them. All of those in preparation so that we have no bad days and that first ride is a good one. Our goggles, kind of the same deal. You know, we go through a lot of different goggle lenses. I'm pretty famous for scratching a, a new goggle lens on a tree limb or something like that. So you'll go through goggle lenses throughout the season, but the foam on the inside and making sure that that's all in good working order. Again, the straps aren't torn, all of these things so that as I go to use them for that first ride and actually for the season, I'm just ready to go. The helmet, and you guys know this is an F3 carbon. We've had uh, plenty of talks about this helmet and why I love it. Um, it's lightweight. I will tell you that a cool tip, for those of you that are a, a small medium like FlexFit, know that the way the shell sizes work with Climb, I've actually gone into a small shell size helmet and then just um, taken the, the internals of the helmet lining out and gone to a slightly bigger liner on the inside and I was able to go with a smaller exterior helmet and still fit almost like a medium. So that's a cool little tech tip that I really like because I don't like big bulky looking helmets. But in terms of the helmet and preparation tip, going through and making sure that every time you clocked a tree or you maybe connected with the handlebars or something like that, you're just looking for any kind of imperfections, cracks or fatigue in the visor. Visors are pretty inexpensive and they do and are necessary. So I like having the visor there, I'm, but I'm also wanting to check to make sure that I don't have any cracks and things like that. Know that you can pull the lining out of your helmet, just like everything that's here, and you can wash it. So if you're going on another season, maybe even a few of you a couple of seasons, because there's heck, there's just nothing wrong with your helmet, you can pull that lining out and wash the lining. So great preparation tip. All right, so beyond washing your balaclavas, your neck socks, Lots of different reasons why I would go with a balaclava versus a neck sock. We can do that in another video. But inspecting that gear, great preparation tip. Going through your knee guards. These things are protecting your knees, your shins, the whole lower half of your leg. It's important to check these out, um, inspect for cracks. A lot of times these things will work themselves loose. So what a great time if you had to you know, put some different screws in there or something like that. Inspection of your knee guards especially those guys that are running with actual braces. I know that they'll go through and really inspect those. Your boots, depending on how much uh, time you've had with your boots, I'll go through nearly two sets of boots a season. That's putting on somewhere around that 4,000 mile mark. But depending on how hard you are on your boots and how much time you spend trying to free snow and ice from your running boards and you just get unlucky, you get caught somewhere, something like that, inspecting the sole of the boot as well as the boa cable. I have seen these boa cables snap and what a bummer way to ruin that first day or days of riding when it's something easily inspected, uh, inspected and I can go ahead and make that replacement relatively simple. So the boa boots becoming one of my most favorite uh, pieces of footwear, but inspecting the boots, knowing how many miles I have on them, um, you shouldn't have any leaks, but if you do, man, what a perfect time preseason to address that. And then lastly, your outerwear. You guys can tell this is, uh, this is new for this season, but I got to test this. This is the new Scout onesie. Um, we'll hear this in a different video. By far one of my favorite outerwear pieces that Climb has ever made. Um, I like it for its durability. Uh, I like it for a lot of reasons, but in terms of um, preseason preparation, Looking at the pant legs, making sure that there's no tears, that your zippers are all intact, your gaiters are all working. These little clips down here, making sure that these haven't torn because these are very necessary to clip to your boot so that you don't get snow built up over the top of your boot, even with the Havoc boot. But looking at all of this, if there's any snaps, there's any enclosures, Velcro, things like that. And then again, guys, remembering that we can take this and throw it in the wash. So cleaning out our gear, it's gonna help bring that Gore-Tex to life, help the waterproofing, and it you know, just cleans up your gear. So if you've got some used equipment, great preparation by just washing your gear and taking care of all the things that are gonna take care of you on that first day. So another preseason preparation, which to be honest with you, shouldn't just be about the preseason. Your fitness level as a mountain rider is, is so crucial. You know, time and time again, people coming to next level, they, they, they bought a new sled, they've got all the gear, they've, they've you know, done all of those other things to prepare, but they've essentially neglected to, to work on themselves, which would be the number one, uh, I would say, priority when it comes to let's have a great year, let's have not only a great first day, but let's throughout our season continue to progress as a rider 
it's got to come from taking care of ourselves. So fitness and another preparation for us is to stay fit so that before we ride, we get up to elevation, we're actually feeling the effects of being prepared versus the other way around where we had that sort of potato chip, fresh off the couch type of a regiment, and now we're paying for it throughout our, our year. Remember that fitness isn't just about how much we lift or how heavy we go, uh, or even how long we go in terms of you know running or biking or whatever it is. It's literally about being fit to ride. So doing a lot of stretching, you are gonna work with some weights so that you are prepared to lift those big heavy snowmobiles around. But having a good cardiovascular system to me is, is so dang crucial when we, when we can settle our heart down, especially after something that we've done that's taken a bunch of energy, we've got that heart rate way up, bring that heart rate back down so that we can breathe normally, we can think normally. A lot of times when I see riders and they're out there and they're kind of hanging on for dear life, some of that isn't just that they don't have the right technique. A lot of it is that they're so out of shape, they're not breathing well, that their brain is no longer making decisions. And that's when you see these guys headed into the trees or headed into these situations where they end up being stuck. And a lot of that came from just how physically fit they were or they weren't. So when I'm home and I'm in my little, this is my gym. This is, I don't go to a big fancy gym and I don't think you need to either. Um, there are a lot of reasons why having some type of a home gym is really important or really helpful. And it's actually pretty beneficial with cost savings. Uh, there are a lot of people that don't like to work out in front of an audience. I like to be able to come out here right, at, right after you know my first cup of coffee. I've maybe had a little bit of a breakfast and no excuses. I've got my gym right here at home and it's, it's set up fairly basic, but it's perfect for the regiment that I know I need when it comes to snowmobiling and any other activity that I like to do. So when I get out here in the morning, I'll jump on the Peloton and on, on uh, the elliptical. I'll even do things where depending on the day outside, I'll go run. So I'll at least try to put a mile in or so, sometimes a couple of miles. On the Peloton, I'll pedal for around 20 minutes. So at a given pace, that'll give, a, give me about six miles. And so as I start to track that throughout my week and then throughout my month, you know, it, it definitely gives me some targets to focus on. And I think that's important too, is understanding that you're working out for a reason. And so I'll get onto the Peloton. We'll go for about those six miles. I'll jump off. And while my heart rate is up, it's probably in that 140 to 150, just depending on the day and how hard I've pedaled. And then I'll dive right into these routines that I'm going to share with you. And I call them 10 to ones. 10 to ones are relatively simple workouts where you can kind of, it's self-explanatory. I'm going to go from 10 reps down to one. What I like doing is mixing it up. I like picking five, sometimes six specific exercises and going from 10 reps down to one. And it's a really cool way to feel a burn, making sure that you're working some specific muscle groups as well as keeping that heart rate up because heart rate and keeping that heart rate up to me is key. And it's so, it so goes right hand in hand with snowmobiling. You think about mountain riding and when you're riding and you're really getting after it, your heart rate is spiking. Then all of a sudden you tap the brake, you stop, you're going to change direction. Maybe you've got to adjust something and then you go again. What happens to your heart rate right then and there can make or break those next few moves. And it's just allowing that heart rate to come back down again. If it stays spiking the entire time, again, I'm no longer thinking, I'm gasping for air and I'm going to make mistakes. All right, guys, that is a wrap. Being prepared. It is, it is the number one thing about our, our preseason. So hopefully these preparation tips were helpful. You guys remember, I wanna be the asset to my riding crew, not the liability. So whether it's checking my avalanche equipment, my riding gear, making sure my sled is prepared, making sure I'm prepared physically, all of those things are gonna help not only make that first day a good one, but it's gonna to lead to an awesome, awesome season. You guys remember to leave those questions and comments. I wanna know what your preseason preparation tips look like. I'm also reaching out to all of you. We see the analytics behind this channel. Please help us support this channel by subscribing. Again, like the video and we will see you guys next time.